time. On this uh, second video lesson on sustainability, we'll focus more specifically on the economic sustainability. So recall from the previous uh, video that uh, that uh, that it is very broadly accepted that uh, sustainability uh, relates to the three parts of, of uh, social sustainability, environmental sustainability, and uh, economic sustainability. So I will now then focus more specifically on the on the notion of economic sustainability, which is of course uh, in relevant for the environmental economics. And uh, in this lesson, I will I will focus on the uh, on the discussion on on the on the textbook uh, by Perman et al, who consider the two types of uh, concepts of uh, economic sustainability. Firstly, we can think of um, uh, economic sustainability as a sustainable state in which uh, uh, utility or consumption path does not decline over time. So this is from the from the perspective of the of the consumption. And usually, of course, if you think about uh, microeconomic theory, then then uh, then we think about utility as a function of this uh, as a function of consumption. So in some sense, it doesn't matter. We we talk about consumption, or ultimately we have in mind uh, uh, that uh, utility or well being of people does not decline. But uh, but uh, in economics, we usually think about it as a as a stable consumption path. Another perspective is to think about sustainable state as one where uh, resources are managed uh, such that uh, that uh, production opportunities are maintained for the future. So you might think about it as another side of the coin that if there are production opportunities are maintained, then also that that will then then uh, uh, result as a, as a stable consumption path. Uh, in some sense, if we think about uh, what can the current uh, generations do, is that uh, that we can we can uh, we can really uh, um, take care of the resource base, so so we can maintain the resources, so that the future generations can also have the have the meet their production opportunities for the future. However, of course, we cannot uh, cannot really control what the future generations might do with those resources. So, if the if the future generations uh, uh, do not uh, utilize the resources to maintain the consumption path, but rather, for example, uh, decide to wage war or or use resources inefficiently, then then it's not really something that we can we can uh, uh, control. But what we can control is that this resource base is, is sufficient to maintain this kind of consumption path. So perhaps this is the reason why the second uh, approach to sustainability is, uh, is, uh, um, is considered important that we, we pay attention to the, to the sustainable resource base. So if we think about the resources, then the attention is immediately then drawn to the capital stocks. And uh, the book by Permanent Al then draws a distinction between uh, four types of capital. Uh, firstly, there is natural capital, which um, comprehensively covers uh, all of the environmental assets, including, including uh, uh, water systems, land, uh, uh, resources such as uh, crude oil or, or gas or coal, forest fisheries. Uh, in, in general, any any like like uh, like uh, uh, services that the biosphere and atmosphere can uh, can uh, can provide. So this is just uh, collectively referred to as uh, as as natural capital, and then the other three uh, three types of capital are are considered human made capital so this uh, this is why i then underline the natural capital with green color and other other three categories are underlined with red color so the red color refers to that they are all human made capital but we can we can this human made capital also uh, categorize in three parts so one is the physical capital 
which includes buildings, plants, equipment, uh, all this kind of uh, all this kind of material capital. But then we can also have this kind of softer type of capital, and it, we can talk it about, about human capital and intellectual capital. So here, the distinction between human capital and intellectual capital is that uh, uh, human capital uh, refers to the skills and education. So this is embodied in, in a specific people. So if, uh, if, uh, if some uh, highly educated and learned person dies, then this human capital is lost. Okay. However, intellectual capital is then this kind of disembodied skills and knowledge. So, so if a person writes a, writes an um, academic study, then then this this uh, intellectual capital remains uh, in uh, in uh, potentially indefinitely in in some some uh, some uh, stored form, even even though this author of the of the of the study uh, eventually passes away. So therefore, for example, books and papers and cultural constructs and, and so on, they, they uh, uh, are included in this intellectual capital, which is not really, uh, really uh, or it, it's uh, uh, independent of specific people who are reading those books or enjoying the cultural constructs. So now if we think about this, uh, this, uh, these types of capital, then there is two different uh, definitions of uh, of uh, economic sustainability, and we can we can refer to them as strong sustainability and and weak sustainability. So, the strong sustainability maintains that the level of natural capital to be non-declining over time. So if you re recall this kind of resource-based definition of, uh, of economic sustainability, then strong sustainability uh, requires that, uh, that, uh, that the level of natural capital does not uh, decline over time. But then there is the, the weaker notion of economic sustainability that uh, that's only requires that uh, that the total sum of natural and human made capital uh, must be non declined over time so in other words the weak sustainability allows for some kind of substitution that if for example uh, there is loss of natural capital it needs to be then compensated by increase in the human made capital so this can be either this kind of physical capital such as uh, uh, buildings, but it can be also in form of, of intellectual or human capital. So therefore, then the debate in, in economic sustainability then center, centers on this question that how far can human-made capital be a substitute for natural capital? So, so this has been this kind of kind of uh, uh, debated issue. Then there is not really really. Uh, complete consen consensus uh, uh, over this question. So in some sense, uh, uh, strong sustainability doesn't allow for any, any kind of substitution, whereas weak sustainability uh, assumes a perfect uh, substitution between human and uh, human made and, and natural capital. So then we could ask uh, that is this kind of strong sustainability really a feasible goal? So, so uh, for example, then this textbook by Permanent Al, they they refer to a, uh, a statement by by UNESCO, that's a, a organization by United States United Nations, uh, according to which every generation should leave water, air, and soil resources as pure and unpolluted as when it came on Earth. Each generation should leave undiminished all the species of animals it found on Earth. So, permanent all then criticized this uh, this kind of uh, uh, assumption as as or this kind of definition as as uh, as uh, too optimistic or too too uh, too um, uh, or as as completely infeasible. So according to permanent or almost every form of human activity will have some adverse impacts on the environment. 
and uh, there will be some extinctions of, of species no matter how cautious and environmentally conscious is our our behavior so therefore if we come back to this kind of kind of uh, uh, debate between uh, strong versus weak sustainability um one could argue that uh, that uh, perhaps this kind of uh, uh, so strong sustainability is too much to ask that uh, that uh, that uh, there is no possibility to 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 affect the level of natural capital so as as we already saw in the in the previous uh, lesson that of course this kind of uh, um non renewable resources of the of the planet are limited and and they are they are decreasing so then perhaps the the better idea is to take care of this uh, this uh, that that at least we would uh, would take care of this weaker sustainability um in my opinion of course uh, there is still some some room for some something between these two definitions so so as i noted then strong sustainability doesn't allow for any substitution between natural capital and human made capital whereas weak sustainability then assumes perfect substitution so perhaps there is some substitution possibilities but they don't have to be don't have to be uh, perfect so maybe there's some kind of intermediate case of of uh, some limited uh, limited substain so some limited substitution uh, would be a better better definition so so indeed some critics argue that this uh, this um, this options of strong versus weak or this kind of car that that in some sense strong and weak are not this only possibilities but we should have some kind of uh, substitution but not also that it's it's necessarily perfectly substitutable so then re regarding this kind of kind of substitution if we think about this uh, declining stock of uh, non-renewable resources such as oil or gas or minerals or coal, then uh, then there is this important uh, Hartwig rule, which states that uh, that um, basically that uh, that uh, it, it is rule for this kind of optimal or in some sense sustainable uh, uh, path that this kind of uh, non-renewable resources would be should be should be uh, um, uh, utilized and the key idea here is that uh, that uh, if you are extracting these kind of kind of uh, stocks of of uh, natural resources then we should also invest to 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 some some kind of reproducible human human made capital that uh, that uh, that this uh, this rent arising from this natural resource extraction should be should be saved for the future generation so this would then allow for this kind of weak at least the weak type of su sustainability and on this slide i also note as a, as a practical example the 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 oil fund of uh, of norway so of course uh, there is um uh, a relatively large oil industry in the in the small country of Norway, and uh, over the over the years and decades, when this uh, when this uh, this oil fund has uh, invested this kind of returns from this uh, this uh, oil industry to to human made assets, so so this uh, this uh, this uh, market value of the oil fund uh, has has increased. Uh, so while while this was uh, written, it was uh, it was almost uh, one point two trillion U.S. dollars, or or amounted to about uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars per per every every Norwegian citizen. So so this kind of kind of uh, uh, example illustrates that how this uh, how this kind of uh, ideally this kind of kind of uh, natural resources. Uh, could be managed uh, uh, in in a uh, in a weakly sustainable way that uh, that uh, there's also then then um, opportunities for the future generations. So rather than just uh, just uh, spend the oil uh, oil reserves to to um, maintain luxury life uh, for the current generation, then then the oil fund of Norway has has really 
uh, invested these uh, these funds to the to the future generations. So then then also I I conclude by by um, this. Um, uh, comparison of so-called uh, two streams of uh, uh, economic literature. There, so this course is is focusing mainly on the on the environmental economics, but then there is also the the um, domain of uh, ecological economics. So the in some sense, this uh, weak versus strong sustainability is one of this kind of dividing lines between these two uh, two paradigms. So. Um, uh, ecological economists uh, uh, tend to be more more um, in favor of the strong sustainability, and they are more skeptical about the the, the, the market mechanism and uh, and the and the technological change, and uh, they they are more aligned with, for example, the the natural scientific and uh, and uh, ecological literature that we would need some kind of more uh, holistic discipline change to to integrate the natural sciences and uh, and economics. Uh, in contrast, the uh, the environmental and resource economists uh, tend to be more closely aligned with the with the mainstream uh, welfare economics and 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 growth theory. Uh, so so in some sense, the starting point of uh, environmental economics is is really the mainstream economic theory. And then, then uh, they make some way towards the taking the environment into account, whereas uh, ecological economists they take the take more this kind of natural sciences perspective and uh, and uh, and uh, then expand more towards uh, towards economics. So these are these kind of um, uh, two two different uh, different paradigms uh, that it's it's good to be aware of this. Uh, However, maybe this kind of um, a gap between the paradigms is not as steep as this might uh, might uh, might uh, seem. Also, the textbook by Perman et al. All notes that a lot of common ground exists, and uh, and uh, and uh, they argue that nobody has seriously uh, claimed that uh, that uh, the economy's relationship to the natural environment can be left entirely to markets. And uh, and uh, on the other hand, also hardly anybody argues that market incentives have no role to play in that relationship. Uh, and uh, in some sense, the uh, debate is more about that how much the government should interfere with the markets uh, and what is the relative effectiveness of different types of, of policy instruments. So so again, if we think about the the type of policy instruments then then perhaps uh, uh, environmental economists are more in favor of market-based uh, instruments and we come back to that uh, that uh, more more specifically in later lessons whereas then uh, ecological economists would be more more in favor of uh, that kind of command and control type uh, policy instruments but uh, but that's of course just the generalization. So the main point is that to, to draw attention that this kind of uh, kind of uh, uh, these kind of two paradigms uh, do coexist uh, also, and it's good to be good to be aware of that. So in the third uh, part of this sustainable uh, and sustainability uh, discussion, I will then. Uh, in the next lesson, I will discuss the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. Thanks, and see you on the next uh, lesson.